வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் ஃபிங்கர் என்ஸ்லேவ்மெண்ட் அண்ட் வெதர் மெக்கானிக்கல் கான்ஃபிகரேஷன் ஆஃப் த ரிஸ்க் ஜாயிண்ட் காசஸ் அ சேஞ்ச் இன் தி இண்டிசஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபிங்கர் இன்டராக்ஷன் ஸ்பெசிஃபிகலி வி வர் டிஸ்கஸிங் திஸ் பேப்பர் பை நிரஞ்சன் சக்கரபாவி மை பாஸ்ட் டியூவல் டிகிரி ஸ்டூடெண்ட் is currently a prime minister's research fellow in indian institute of science and myself the study performed at iit madras so in the last video we looked at the background we said what are these indices of finger interaction these are individuation index stationarity index and the enslavement matrix what is individuation index the ability of a given finger to move independently without affecting other fingers that is individuation what is stationarity the ability of a given finger to stay stationary when a different finger is the instructed finger is the stationarity index okay enslavement matrix defines finger to finger interaction among the four fingers it's a 4 by 4 matrix what was the hypothesis the hypothesis was that if i make systematic changes in the wrist posture it will cause a statistically different or a systematic change in the individuation index stationarity index and the enslavement matrix this was the hypothesis how did we study this what was the experimental approach that was used what is the experimental method that was used so we placed electromagnetic tracking sensors to measure kinematics of individual phalanges of the index finger middle finger ring finger and little finger so there are three phalanges in each of the finger and we used four of the fingers so 12 different electromagnetic tracking sensors we placed using using a uh, using velcro and surgical tape we placed it these are really small sensors their diameter is 1.8 mm that they can be actually fixed to a finger and then we also placed one more sensor on the wrist that is uh, the dorsal side of the palm so that is uh, just distal to the wrist joint and we placed one more sensor just proximal to the wrist joint in the forearm okay the question that we asked was suppose i keep the hand in this neutral position the wrist in this neutral position and i make movements with given instructed finger where the instructed finger might be index finger middle finger ring finger little finger like that and i am measuring the movements of all the four fingers when each of this take turns to be the instructed finger in the neutral posture or in the flexed posture or in the extended posture will the movements of the non instructed fingers change depending on the posture of the wrist this is the question so we measured all the finger movements and all the segmental movements of all the fingers okay we measured movements of all the phalanges of all the four fingers involved but we informed the participants what was the instructed finger okay and there were three conditions first condition is the neutral condition in which the wrist remains neutral the other condition is when the wrist is extended like this and the other condition is when the wrist is flexed like this right so the angle of extension and flexion was 30 degrees how did we choose this 30 degrees because this was an experiment performed in my lab i know all the details it turns out that there was a study performed earlier in canada 
using force sensors that also studied the effect of wrist posture on enslavement that used 30 degrees. But that is not the reason why we performed this. Actually what we did, I remember distinctly what happened was that we tried to use 60 degree flexion and 60 degree extension and we performed some pilot studies. It turns out that participants, many of the participants were not able to move their fingers when the wrist was flexed like this, movement was very difficult, they felt uncomfortable, they did not want to participate in that experiment. Likewise, when the wrist was extended to 70, 80 degrees or 60 degrees, they did not really feel comfortable doing the finger movement tasks. Because of this reason, we had to choose joint angles that the participants felt were comfortable. Within the comfortable range of motion of the participants is where we perform this experiment. Actually, this can be considered to be a major limitation of the study. I will discuss this in a future video while we are discussing the interpretation, inference and the implications of this study. Right now, our focus is to discuss the methods, experimental approach. So, we used three different wrist postures, neutral, flexion at 30 degrees and extension at 30 degrees and in each of these, we instructed either the index finger or the middle finger or the ring finger or the little finger. What was the task? The task was to follow a metronome and move the instructed finger in a cyclical fashion following the metronome such that for every tick of the metronome, you are either at the top or at the trough of the sinusoid. So, this is where the tick came and you have to be here, 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 here and so on and so forth. This was the task. Like this, we collected data for 30 seconds, which we called as one trail. And likewise, we collected three or four trials. I do not remember the exact details. Something like three or four trials we collected. And to analyze this data, we just took the upgoing half cycle and the downgoing half cycle separately, and then we performed analysis of movements of all the fingers. We only took for the purpose of this study, we only took the data from the distal phalanges and analyzed. The data from the other segments of the fingers were not analyzed for the purpose of this study because here we are only addressing how the individuation, stationarity and enslavement indices change as a function of wrist posture. For that, just the distal phalange data is enough. Our goal was something else. We were also interested in studying synergies that uh, make up this kind of uh, movements, but that was a different study. But in this study, we just restricted our attention to enslavement and so we only focused on the distal phalange kinematics data. We had two tasks in the study. One is the maximum voluntary uh, contraction movements in which uh, people were asked to make movements, maximum flexion and extension movements with each finger. We used this to decide the range of motion of the fingers that will be used in the experimental task. Then cyclic flexion and extension movements at the metacarpophalangeal joint. This is the metacarpophalangeal joint that is the that is the metacarpophalangeal joint such that 75 percent plus or minus 10 percent of the maximum possible flexion extension range of motion is achieved with a metronome frequency of 0.75 hertz. Okay. This was repeated at the neutral posture, at the flexed wrist posture and at the extended wrist posture. The instruction to the participants was keep up with the metronome, follow a metronome either to be at the trough or at the crest for each beep of the metronome. That is the movement of one cycle 
in kinematics was 0.75 hertz but the metronome frequency was one and half hertz because we had one beep at the crest and one beep at the trough okay so it was a little it was faster than the actual movements all right we took the displacement data from the distal phalanges only and we performed a low pass filtering because these movements are very slow right what is the movement 0.75 hertz so any movement signal that is or any component of the signal that is having high frequency component is likely noise so we performed a low pass filter at a cutoff frequency less than 5 hertz actually the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter was 3 hertz okay and we constructed the enslavement matrix by using the slopes of the linear regression on displacement of one finger with the displacement of the other non instructed fingers so we constructed the enslavement matrix by performing a linear regression of the instructed finger with the non instructed fingers and we computed the individuation index and stationarity index as was previously defined by rosenschieber similarly we also computed the ii and si individuation index and stationarity index as the extent to which a passive fingers are independent when a given finger was instructed that is defined as this value and the and the extent to which a given finger remains stationary when the other fingers are active is defined using this formula okay this was uh, taken from the enslavement where sij is taken from the enslavement matrix okay that is the enslavement index of the jth finger when the eighth finger was active remember the difference between individuation index and stationarity index individuation is how much less i am influencing others if i am if my own actions don't influence others that means that my actions are individuated okay how much less i am affected by other people that is stationarity if no one cares for me that is individuation or if no one cares about my movements or my actions or my opinions that is individuation my opinions are completely individuated if i don't care about anybody what others are thinking what others are saying that is stationarity i hope that's clear if no one cares about my movements or my actions that is individuation my actions are then in individuated if i am not affected by what the others are doing or saying that is stationarity remember the difference there is a difference okay and also look at the difference between the formula for individuation index and stationarity index okay the summation has j here in the formula for individuation index and i here in the formula for stationarity index this is different which finger is active that is the eighth finger what are all the uh, passive fingers those are all j fingers okay remember the enslavement index of the jth finger when the eighth finger is active is sij remember so in which dimension you sum determines whether you are talking about individuation or stationarity remember so it's a, it's a little different it's a it's a very a uh, small difference it's too tiny to be noticed but the actual difference in the computation is huge okay please be very cautious in understanding and interpreting this so so we performed a statistical analysis on the individuation index and stationarity index and the enslavement matrices for example for the individuation index we used a three way anova to differentiate between the direction of movement whether your movement is flexing or extending and whether you are on the which half cycle you are suppose that is what you are doing whether you are in the up going half cycle or down going half cycle we separately analyze this which direction that is wrist posture whether it is neutral or flexed or extended because we had three different conditions and 
which particular fingers were used index, middle, ring, little. So, three way ANOVA, three way ANOVA on SI and II. What are the three factors? Direction, two levels. What are the two levels? Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension of the fingers. This is for the fingers. This is movement of the fingers. Then wrist posture. Three levels. What are the three levels? Neutral, flexion, extension. Then fingers. Four levels. What are the four levels? Index, middle, ring, little. Among this, of course, the four fingers will have different levels of enslavement. That is somewhat expected and it has also been previously shown. That is not going to be new. And we are also not very keen on exploring direction effects. Our most important factor is the wrist posture. Is the wrist posture affecting the IA and SI? That is the question. Is the neutral flexion and extension wrist postures having different SI and different IA in different fingers? That is the question that we wanted to ask. And what we found, I will discuss in a future video, in the next video. Okay. For now, we will stop here. So, in this video, we looked at uh, the experimental approach that we took, that we used uh, electromagnetic tracking sensors that we placed on all the segments of all the fingers and we only analyzed the data from the distal phalanges and uh, we computed the individuation index and stationary index and we performed the three way ANOVA as we just now discussed. With this, we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.